Welcome to the Smack Raw Podcast. We are your hosts, Kyle and Rob Rude. You're, we're your one-stop shop for all your WWE main show recaps, reviews, predictions. The main shows, though, Raw and SmackDown. Other guys, they might do NXT. I don't got time for all that. <laughs> yeah, NXT, what, 205 Live. Hell, some of y'all probably doing um, Ring of Honor and New Japan. Not us, though. We ain't got... Damn time, Rob's as got much, like as much as I'd love to do all that happy stuff. Like, yeah, we don't have time. Yeah, but, hey, we're about to be doing AEW though. Who? I mean, we can't kid ourselves. We, I will I think, be yeah, I feel like AEW. If, if we want to stay relevant, we're gonna have to cover AEW. I'm so excited for Saturday. Up. Going off topic already, but I'm so excited for Saturday. I can't yeah. wait. Even if it's a flop, I can't wait. <laughs> no, me too. I can't wait. Um, anyway. On to the intro. I've been waiting all day to tell you guys I bought a Charlotte Flair figure, and it's on my desk. I'm slowly collecting figures to put on Hell my yeah, desk, man. and I'm excited, and that's all I got with what's going on in my life that's new right now. <laughs> I got a collection of pins myself. Anyways, you can find us on YouTube. All you got to do is search for the Smacked Raw Podcast. We are also on Podbean at smackedrawpod.podbean.com. You can follow us on Twitter at smackedraw. What is it? Smackedrawpod, right? You yes. think I would know this shit? It's at at, at, at smackedrawpod, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Sorry, I guys. I'm the Twitter guy. He's not. I'm the. Twitter yeah. Guy. Rob. Rob. Rob mainly does all the Twitter work here, but I'm on there too. You can find me at the Kai Tai Show, or if you want to speak to Rob directly, Rob, where can they find you? At two words, can't see me. The letter C. With a letter C, folks. And two is spelt out, by the way. T-W-O. <laughs> of course, we'll have all the links in the description so you can find us respectively if you don't actually take the time to write this down. Um, I'm going to leave that up to Rob, though. I wouldn't take the time uh, to write this down. <laughs> We're here, though, to talk about money in the bank. As you may have guessed from our not-so-discreet thumbnail, Brock Lesnar is our money in the bank winner. We'll get to it. It's creating a ton of buzz. However, don't let it overshadow the show. There was a lot that went down. Rob and I got you covered. Um, so, Rob, first off, though, overall, overall opinion of the show. What did you think? I thought it was a hundred percent great show. I'm, I'm, opti- I'm, I, I'm optimistic when it comes to WWE. A lot of people complain. I'm easy to please, man. You can, you like tonight. SmackDown was excellent. Raw yesterday was kind of boring, but it was still excellent. I thought the show was excellent, except for the cash in, which we will get to. I didn't like to cash in, but now I do like to cash in. I'm just going to throw it out there. So the night of the show, 95%. Today, 100%. I thought it was a great show all around start to finish. I enjoyed it. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm going to be more with the majority in this. Uh, I, I almost let the show, the ending of the show, ruin my opinion of the overall show. But I had a night to sleep on it. And thank God I didn't let it get me like that because, honestly, the, the show was awesome uh, from – from bottom to top, I mean, they did a lot of things that we like to see. Uh, you got Bailey as the winner, the new champion, even the two hundred five uh, two hundred five live guys got brought up off the um, uh, kickoff show onto the main card. We even had a surprise matchup, whether you liked it or not. It was a surprise, um, and then two amazingly good uh, championship matches. Um, along to go in there so yeah the show was great uh the ending definitely overshadowed a lot of it for a lot of us um but now we've had some time to sleep on it i'm kind of okay with it we'll dive into it more um i still think there was better stuff they could have done but uh i'm coming around i'm coming around to brock especially with the boom box i mean come on now that's hard not to smile <laughs> <laughs> what do you see fucking brock at brock lesnar i got tagged. jamming out to I the got, boom box. i got tagged in three separate boom box videos today Ooh. i was so excited to watch them <laughs> it's so great what? freaking eurythmics baby shark and then i i honestly don't remember it was it was earlier this morning <laughs> i don't remember what the third one was but it was absolutely amazing it was yeah. um oh my god what was it it was this was, uh so fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> That's what it was. Oh my gosh, dude! Oh, yeah, so Brock, Brock's an internet meme. Uh, <laughs> once again, but anyways, we'll go ahead. We're gonna get into the show. Uh, Money in the Bank uh, came to us from Hartford, Connecticut. Um, had a great card once again. Like I said, uh, AJ and Rollins they killed it. Of course, uh, the show opened up on the kickoff show. 
with Daniel Bryan and Rowan taking on the Usos. Uh, had a great match. They um, all busted out some new stuff. Uh, most notably, one of the Usos, I can't tell you who, um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, broke out uh, Whisper in the Wind, did his best Jeff Hardy impression. That was pretty dope. I, um, I, I have to say I'm mad that they, we did not get to see hemp titles. Everybody and their mom thought Daniel Bryan and Rowan were going to have hemp titles, but they didn't bring them out. I, I, uh, yeah, I know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, time will tell. I don't think that they're going to completely ignore it, hopefully. Uh, anyways, the match ended um, with uh, – how did it end? The Usos got a uh, double, double super splash. kick – or no, double splash. Yes, double splash. Yes. Yes. On Daniel Bryan. They took out Rowan the on the outside and they ended up with a double splash. I also had to throw it out there that I thought this was a title match. Like, this was, like, on the on the pre-show. So, like, I'm a busy man, so I, I wasn't watching. Like, I watched it towards the end. But when the match was over and the crowd went nuts, they were talking about, I heard it in the background, that, oh, this is going to change. The Usos got to be on Raw now and blah, 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 blah. And the way they were talking about how the Usos got to be on Raw, I'm like, that must mean they have the titles. And I should have paid more attention to the screen, but I did. I'm a busy man. But I, I thought... saw conflicting reports leading to the to the pay per view. Anyways, I didn't know. I went into the they they too. they never fully said that it was non title yeah, or a title. Man. Like, I mean, how are you gonna have a non title tag team match at a pay per view when you're having? Well, tag I'll tell you. I'll right tell now? you why. It's because it was the kickoff show. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, usually, yeah. usually if there's a title match on the kickoff show, it, it ain't going to change hands regardless. So they, they probably was just like, ah, we're going to put the Usos over, so let's make it not for the belts. But at um, the same won't... time, the kickoff show, oh, my God, the belts changed hand. I got to keep watching. Yeah, man. That's you, you know, real. in a perfect world, you know, they would have <laughs> some logic, right? But I mean, I'm okay. Not a perfect world. I'm okay that it was a non-title match, but, like, I just I thought it was. If I didn't think it was, I'd be okay with that. But I don't know. <laughs> it, <laughs> anyways, is, it is what it is. It, it is, is what, what it is. is. The Usos won. That's kickoff show. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, the the main show kicks off with the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Thought it was an awesome position for the match. Really get people hyped. Always good to have like a slam bang match right as the opener. Uh, the match was between Nikki Cross, Naomi, Carmella, Dana Brooke. Mandy Rose, Natalia, Ember Moon, and Bailey. Uh, great match, dude. Ember Moon hitting an eclipse from the ladder. Come on now. That's like, valid, but you know what's more valid? <laughs> Naomi's puffs, up? man. Naomi's puffs. How about them puffs? <laughs> the bumblebee stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the bumblebee. She was in red, looking like bumblebee Yo, in some. That was like Afro a WrestleMania puffs, man. attire, man. What? She came out dressed to kill that night. Oh man, she looked amazing. I gotta throw it out there. She looked yeah, amazing. Yeah, man. I saw her pictures on Twitter. I saw what she was going for. She nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, she tweeted like she was still in her puffs and some pink pants, man. Talking about it's hard to sneak up on somebody in pants this long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's great. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, some other some other highlights from the match. Carmella was taken out early with what looked to be a knee injury. Uh, wasn't obvious right away if it was real or not. Um, I actually tweeted asking if it was real. So, I mean, they did, yeah, they did a good exactly. job. They did a um, good job. Uh, another part, Sonya Deville got involved. Uh, made it look like Mandy Rose was going to win because you had Sonya Deville uh, climbing the ladder with Mandy on her back. Um only to be met at the top by Bailey, tosses Fire and Desire down. Bailey is your new money in the bank uh, for 2019, the female roster. Crowd goes nuts. Awesome for Bailey. We've needed a reason to care. We've needed a reason to get behind her again. She's too good to not have the support of the crowd, so this was perfect. Um, we followed that up with a United States Championship match between Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe. Uh, Ray pretty much got his quick win back. Um, however, uh, in the process, he busted Joe's face with a seated senton. Um, it's the same thing he did to uh, Undertaker. Broke his orbital bone. Did you see that? Yes. yes. You saw that? Yes. Comparing, it was the same thing. Looked just the exact same. Like He jumps off the top of the ropes, and it looks like he's going to land and sit on your chest is how it's supposed to go. Right, right. But he he leans a little too far forward, and all his body weight, even though he's a smaller fella, still a lot of weight come cannonballing on your dome piece. Right, right, especially when you got Joe making the jump to do the flip. Yeah, man. And, um, well, anyways, yeah, so he he lands on Joe's face. 
Uh, bust his nose up pretty bad. It actually just made Joe look even more terrifying. Um, but then the show ends, uh, or the match ends when uh, Ray does a Huracurana like roll up pin and gets like the quick pin, even though Joe's shoulder wasn't down. Uh, the ref botching stuff is going to be a theme of the night. Just a heads up. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, <laughs> raise your champ. Then he beat him down in front of his kid. He beat him down in front of his kid. Rob, come on, Joe. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. You lost your belt. It, it, leave him alone. You lost your belt. On, you lost fair and square. Okay, and maybe it wasn't fair in and square. In front of his kid, dude. In front of his kid. <laughs> Like, like, kudos to Dominic for not getting in the ring, by the way. Right, uh, right. I don't care, man. I'm I'm a big dude, and I ain't getting in the ring with with a crazed Joe. Right. You know but what if, I mean? But if you were to ask me to bet money if Dominic was going to get involved in this match, I would have lost my money. I would have said I Dominic was killed. getting involved for sure. I think everybody did. I don't understand why he didn't. What's the angle of having him if he's not going to do anything? But Yeah, I think I think they want him to get involved, but maybe it's not, uh, not up to snuff in the ring. And they don't. They're, maybe they're concerned that he might botch a segment, you know. So they're kind of just keeping him present and using him for the emotional factor. Maybe he's just got to work out some kinks uh, in the ring before they trust him to get in there and like physically carry out, you know, an angle. But I, I you're right, man. I thought I thought he was going to be in there too. Honestly, um, I thought he was going to do something. Well, um, I don't. know. Maybe we'll find out down the road. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Um, oh, and we have the best in the world, the Miz. Taking on Shane, or no, no, excuse me, best in the world, <laughs> Shane McMahon, taking on The Miz in a uh, steel cage match. Um, this one, okay. I, I was all right with this one. Um, I, I don't know about the ending because it's, it's effing weird. <laughs> but but uh, the match the match was all right. You couldn't have asked the guys to do much more. I honestly don't know what you would have done with it anyways. Um, I did like that. Uh, you see that one, Shane? Uh, the bell rang in his ass. He tried, tried getting to, out like, right away. Jump. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and the out. quickest damn cage win ever, man. <laughs> right, right. Like, I don't know. I, I kind of was like, I wish he would have made it. Like, just for that, like, oh, my God, did that really just happen? I'm glad we had a match. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I was like, I kind of wish he would have just been like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the crowd kind of bewildered. <laughs> right. Like, okay, like, next. <laughs> would have been good. <laughs> I've always kind of wanted that too, just like a flat right. out like like a Sheamus like just not on WrestleMania, but like when Sheamus flattened Daniel Bryan in like eight seconds, I wouldn't oh, mind I seeing watching. that. I was watching. You know, I remember that. No, not that one. That one they did it at the wrong time, but there's a right time for that. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Was tonight was you know was Money in the Bank? It I don't know, but it would have been funny. Anyways, um, Miz uh, gets a hold of the chair, walks. Uh, Walk Shane down for a while, you know, bust him up pretty good. Um, there's some confusing moments. Uh, Miz first gets Shane in a figure four, and the ref uh, says, or no, the commentators, you know, tell that if Shane taps out, of, or Shane, it doesn't matter if Shane taps out, you can't win via tap out. But I, I swear I heard the opposite later on in the match when Shane had uh, Miz in a submission, and they were saying if Miz taps, he loses. Um, on top of that, we had uh, flip flop with the rope breaks too. One point, I think the ref tried to count a pin on the Miz, and he had a rope break. But when the shoe was on the other foot, the ref wasn't doing it, and it even had the commentator speaking on it too. That you know the the rope break shouldn't have broken up the pin mm-hmm. whenever the Miz was pinning Shane. So they didn't really make it clear if it was like a botch or maybe the ref was just worried for his job. Uh, either way, right, it wasn't too right. clear. Yeah, I um, think I think because of the Joe thing, I think it has something to do with WrestleMania. I mean, I was going to wait till the third time it happened because we're trying to go in line right. here. But, I mean, it, the people listening obviously watched the pay-per-view. There were three ref botches. I think yeah. it has something to do with WrestleMania and Rousey's shoulder not being down. I can't tell you exactly what, but there was we three ref seeing botches. botches. We're seeing quite a few now since then. Right. Like, I mean, are they doing yeah. it on purpose? Because you're not going to have three in one pay-per-view and it not be on purpose. That obvious. You know what I mean? Like, obvious botches. Too. Like, I mean, like, when it happened in the Shane Miz match, when the ref was like, rope break. You've seen it in his face. Like, that ain't no rope break, but I'm going to say it's a rope break anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, walk away like, yeah, this match just flipped and it's my fault. Like, that's what I've seen in his face anyway. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to tell. Maybe, you know, they'll start addressing it. 
Um, kind of like via back in the Attitude Era when um, The Rock beat uh, or yeah, The Rock beat The Big Show in the Royal Rumble, but The Rock's feet hit first. And so, but The Rock was allowed to stay in the match, eventually won the Royal Rumble, and then Big Show had to run around for like a month to two months, I think, um, trying to get proof through witnesses, um, camera angles, stuff like that, to prove that he really won. And so maybe this will be something akin to that. Who knows? Who knows? I, but anyways, I, I want to sidetrack okay. just for a minute because you brought that yeah, up. Go ahead. Back to WCW World War Three. Goodness I, gracious! Okay, oh, so I forget what bird. I forget what year it was. It was. Yeah. I know it was Hulk Hogan Macho Man. I don't remember exactly how it went. One of the two was flipped over the rope, and their feet touched yeah. the ground, but the ref didn't see it. I think it was Hogan got flipped. And then Hogan ended up going back in the ring, and Macho Man got eliminated. But then the next night on Nitro, Macho Man or Hulk, one of the two, I mean, if anybody listens to this, hit me up on Twitter. Two words can't see me, and let me know. Like, the next night on Nitro, I'll never forget it. I think the Macho Man was like, no, Hogan's feet touched. I have the footage. And then he went to show it, and the footage cut out just before the feet touched the ground. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember the storyline. I don't remember who flipped who, but I remember the footage cutting out. And, oh, man, that brought back a memory. It's a great way to get Uh, segments for a couple weeks. It's easy writing, man. You can can take a ref botch, and and you can get a couple segments out over the next one. You know what I mean? You really can. Like It it cut in the 90s VHS snow television television and everything if you guys i'm not gonna google this if you guys are listening to this hit me up on twitter and tell me was it hulk or was it macho man that flipped over and didn't get Dude, if any of you are even old enough but jesus oh Christ. my right right <laughs> <laughs> oh the good old days anyways uh, back on track uh <laughs> shane mcmahon eventually wins uh the miz is trying to uh superplex shane over the cage while oh, uh, shane's man. attempting to escape uh but shane being the sweaty slippery man he is um, is able to escape just via sliding out his damn shirt. His shirt came <laughs> off. Yeah, his, his shirt, shirt came off came and he got fall out of the ground. I was so mad I didn't get that superplex. I was. So it was a, it's it. a realistic ending, though. If you think about it, if you're wearing a shirt and you're dangling on the other side, do the same thing. You know, so I mean, it made sense. It just was kind of like flat for me. But no, the match was okay. It was all right. Man. What just hit me just now, right this second, to make that ending yes. just a little bit better, make Miz yeah. go for the superplex. But he pulls the shirt off, and Miz goes. But she and the Miz goes down. Oh, that would have been better. Wow, wow, that would have been good because you would have had the visual like of them both falling. Right. And like, maybe Miz, you know, he's a good actor. Maybe Miz. he has that time in the air. They can slow it down. He's like, fuck, oh, <laughs> super plexing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, Miz oh. won. Or excuse me, Shane won. We'll see where it goes. Uh, they're still touching on it, Raw and SmackDown, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, followed that up with the Cruiserweight Championship that got bumped onto the main card. Boy, I wanted to get behind this. I really did. Uh, I'll but be 100% it, honest. I didn't even watch it. I didn't it's, know who it's these hard, guys man. were. I, didn't, I want to know who these guys are, but I don't have time to know who these guys are. In WWE, they didn't promote them. You know, it, it's going on your main card. Promote your main card to the very least. Give us like a brief video package like, over a commercial or right. something, you like know? when Give you and something. I, when we did our Money in the Bank predictions match, we both had this yeah. on the preview show. <laughs> I felt terrible. Um, I saw a GIF on Twitter, and everyone was using it as what they call the piss break. You know, you you designate a match you're the least excited for. Mm. You take that opportunity to go to the bathroom so you can at least see the other matches that you're more interested in. And on Twitter, it just showed people leaving in droves, and you know. And you feel bad, you know, because these these guys, Tony Nese and Arya Davari, man, they're killer in ring workers, and they're and they're great at their job. They just they have the least or one of the least watched shows on the WWE network. They don't get any promotion by the main shows or any real exposure. So, unfortunately, you know, these guys could have killed themselves in the and, ring, and people would have cared less. You know, and to top it off, don't they get shown like after SmackDown? When everybody's like tired and they already got all yeah, the good yeah, content they, to to save production costs, they they film it following SmackDown directly. And like, yeah, like you said, you the crowd's it, like, exhausted. Shouldn't you film it before SmackDown? Like, I it'd mean, be good, you know, like teaser, and then like then I'm ready for SmackDown. But you give me just say a Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair tag team match, and then you give me these guys that I don't know who they are. 
I don't want to watch <laughs> you. Like, sorry, bro, nothing against you, but I don't want to watch you. I'm tired. I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. Especially if, you know, you have a good main event down. So, you you know, you you know, you exert yourself as a fan the most, which is exhausting. It tires you out, and it makes it more difficult to be entertained as time goes on. Even though you're sitting there live, it's not going to – It's you're not magically – gonna be super excited for everything and so it puts 205 live in a tough spot when they're recording it really does um the cruiserweight championship match uh was was fairly good if you stuck around and watched it it was fairly good um davari came out in a nice i think it was like a a a nice car or a low rider akin to um eddie guerrero in in um alberto del rio they used to come out in some really nice cars and it was cool to see that someone else is doing that too taking that role uh, but the match ends when Tony Nese hits the running niece on Arya Davari, and he remains your 205 Live champion. Uh, uh, what you th- what'd you think about the segment with uh, Sami Zayn, man? I don't remember the segment with Sami Zayn. It's oh, not, you don't? I don't. <laughs> I'm so an old guy. Was... I have a bad memory, guys. I'm sorry. It's not it's even all... in my notes. I'm sorry. It's all good, man. It's all good. Um, <laughs> Sammy was backstage. He uh, was trying to get Triple H's attention while Triple H was on a phone call. And he's like, H, you know, eventually H gets off the phone. He's like, H, I'm scared that Braun Strowman, you know, is is out to get me. You know, we got to ban him from the building. Well, um, they fast forward a little bit later. They catch Sami Zayn hung upside down in the backstage. I, I do remember that part. Remember that? Yeah, exactly. So it's you assume it's Braun Strowman. Triple H eventually hunts down Strowman, bars him from the arena. It's like, look, you got to go home. You obviously lose cannon. <laughs> Strowman's, Strowman's like, whatever, like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm at <laughs> I do it. remember ahead. that one. I don't remember the original. Yeah, now, yeah. So, do we want to take? A, you... Do we want to take a second and talk about? We think it's Bray Wyatt that did so. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was gonna say. It leaves you thinking, like, well, if is Sammy, if he's not gonna wrestle, who's gonna take his spot? You know, setting us up for the pay per view, which could have been awesome, mm-hmm. but no, no. It's we got we got Brock. <laughs> But before then, we didn't know that was going to happen. And most of us thought it was Bray Wyatt. All right. Most yes, of us thought yes, it was Bray. Yes, I still right. think that it's going to set up something in the future between Bray and Sammy. Or just set up Bray in general. Like somebody else down the road is going to get flipped upside down and hung. But for now, everybody thought that that led to Bray being in the money. In the well, Brock's, Brock's a hunter. So, I mean, realistically, he could have set up a snare. Because that's, that's Brock's like thing. He's, he, he likes to hunt in Canada and stuff. So. But I don't know. They we've already watched Raw and SmackDown, and they didn't really touch on it too much. So chances are it's never going to be explained. And uh, but who? Hey, who knows? Maybe it was Bray. Hopefully, eh, we'll um, see. We'll see. Anyways, we get to uh, the Raw Women's Tag Championship. Now yes. this was one of the biggest highlights of the night. From here going forward, it was like balls to the wall. Um, so Becky Lynch comes out to defend her Raw Women's ch- Championship against uh, Lacey Evans. It's a good slow match. They, they slowed it down because you can't have the entire show going at that high pace, and obviously we don't want to exhaust Becky Lynch for the two matches. So valid, it's good valid. and slow. Uh, the third wrestling or the third referee botch happened when uh, mm-hmm. Becky was being pinned, and the ref just circled him. It was weird. He yes, never even yes. attempted I do want to – you're jumping count. a little far forward. I, I'm okay. like, I mean, I just want to put it out. Lacey Evans has grown on me. I have a crush on Lacey Evans. <laughs> With, uh, like, I like Lacey Evans over Becky Lynch, and I realized that at the end of this match. Like, really? I was like, oh, my God. Like, I still like Becky. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like, oh, screw Becky. I don't like her having belts and blah, 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 blah. Like, if she would have retained both belts, I would have been okay with that. But Lacey Evans has slowly grown on me, and it's actually in my notes how good she was looking in the green attire, the shiny green attire. She looks so good. Her intro is she came so out in good. green, right? Yeah, she had like the, she was a she had what with the make it rain guns where it, where it just like shoots out like money out yes. of them. She had two yes. of those. Yes, she looks so good. And, and, and like we can jump to the end of the match now. I just want to throw it out there how much I like Lacey Evans now. She has grown on me, and if I had to pick Lacey Evans or Becky Lynch, I would pick Lacey. You wanted Evans. Lacey, okay? Like for sure. And now leading into what you mentioned about the ref botch pin, that's the yeah. moment I realized that 
I want Lacey Evans to win this match. Like, I knew I wanted her to win. I wanted her to be right. the one to take Becky's title. When she had Becky's arm or shoulders on the mat and the ref was checking the shoulders, like, I was so mad. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? Count to three. There it is right there in front of my face. And he didn't do it. I was so mad at that referee, bro. Like, I was so mad at him. Like, I, oh, man. <laughs> I'm getting into a rant, which we're not trying no, to No, 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 no. You're good, man. I, I talk like 90% of the show, so it's right, good to right, hear you right, right. get in there. No, I'm listening to you, man. <laughs> like, that's the um, moment, though. I'm like, man, like, I knew I wanted Lacey to win, but that's the moment where I was really like, that belt's hers, and you're checking the shoulders. We have another botch in our face. Third botch of the night. You're sitting there. You checked three, shoulders man. three times. And then all of a sudden it's flipped. Like, come on, man. Oh, yeah. No, I hear you, man. I, I was, I was kind of wondering the same thing, but I was, I think I was, I don't know what exactly it was. Like, it didn't register to me, like how many botches we had seen until I had time to like kind of like reflect and review my notes and kind of hear what other people were saying. And that's why I was like, yeah, man, just full of ref botches, like an odd amount tonight. And that was that was probably the biggest one. I yes, would say yes. out of them, and it's funny um, because like n- like a lot of people didn't realize that we were getting these botches because uh, excuse me there was like there was like so many tweets out there like her shoulders were down for three seconds what are you doing ref like what are you doing the shoulders were down blah 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 and I had to comment so many times like this was the third botch it's got to be on purpose it has to yeah, be yeah 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 so I can, I could understand okay so I could understand Samoa Joe. Because you could argue that the ref was out of at a line of sight. Yes. But then you would say like, why would you count anyways? But they're a ref. You know they're only operating at like forty percent the right, logic right. of a normal they're, person. Like it's all it's all staged. Their job is to they know when yeah. to count three, and I'm gonna count three. This is the flip that happened where this is a squash match. That's the script. Boom, one, two, three. He doesn't pay attention, and then you and can then say Shannon Miz. Like, that you just forget the rules. It's a, it's an odd match that you right. don't see I too mean, often. You, you ref but Be- say Be- hundred matches a year, though. and yeah. then, oh, his foot's on the rope. It's I'm I'm in robot mode. I'm in autopilot. His foot's autopilot, on the rope. Yeah. It's one two. Nope, it's not a three count. But then you got this one. The ref like puts his hand under his shoulder, flips around, does it again, flips around, does it again. Like oh, <laughs> something's going doing? on. Man. What angle are they trying to hit here? Like. Dude, I'd love to see the salary of a ref, man, because I could do that. I mean, honestly, if that's your performance requirement, I could do your job. I want to get that money. Um, but uh, moving back over to the match, um, after, of course, the failed pin attempt, uh, Becky Lynch hits Lacey Evans with a disarmor. You get a rope break, but eventually she gets her to the middle of the ring, locks it in. Uh, Lacey taps out immediately. I was so uh, sad that the tap was so Yeah, nice. yeah. Becky retains, and just when we we're thinking, you know, we're going to get a break and go into the men's match, uh, Charlotte meets Becky on the ramp and says, nah, turn around. We're doing our match now. With such an arrogant face. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, wouldn't you, man? I would oh, be. Oh, like, get I in the ring. Gleamed. Get back in the ring. Yeah, get back man. in the ring. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Oh, we're wasting no time, you know? <laughs> Um, they have a good back and forth match. I like that uh, Becky. Becky sold. You know she was tired, but she also looked like she had a ton of fight in her. It wasn't cartoonish, like just kicking out of everything. She did show a reasonable amount of fight. Um, the match ended when uh, Lacey Evans got a cheap shot on Becky when the ref wasn't looking. Charlotte hits the big boot, which pissed a lot of people off. That <laughs> was what got her the win, but she won with the big boot. She won with that one other time. like Because normally it's uh, the spear or uh, natural selection are her two big moves yes, that yes. aren't submissions. Um, but she won a, a multi-woman uh, title match too, I think for the Raw belt, back when her and uh, Sasha Banks were going back and forth. She won with a big boot there too, I remember. Um, but anyways, she wins. Then, looks like you called it, man. Uh, if uh, Wondering if Lacey and Charlotte were going to tag team up. You Looks like that's what right. we are going to get, man. They team up. They beat Becky down. Who comes out to save her? But Bailey, And mm-hmm. then we get the first cash-in of the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, so you said you're not for this, right? Mm, okay. <clears throat> I, I actually have it in my notes that I wanted to talk about this. Yeah. I, it's not that I wasn't for a cash-in on the night. Now, right. again, guys, I came back in January, which I'm actually going to tomorrow. I'm going to show you the tweet 
that got me back into wrestling from my Destiny Twitter. Somebody mentioned okay. the Royal Rumble is this Sunday, and I said, oh, yeah, I got to re-up my WWE network. Here I am. Anyway, anyway, I wanted to see the briefcase get held. I'm the new guy. I'm back in town. I'm paying more attention than just Royal Rumble. I want to see the briefcase get held. That's why I was against the cash-in on the night. But when it happened, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't want the cash-in to happen, but when Bailey came out and she had the briefcase in her hand, I was all about it. I was so ready for it. I was literally on the edge of my seat. It was amazing. It was amazing. So, yes, I wasn't about the cash-in, but once it started unfolding, I was all about it. I was so ready. Right. And um, me, I was I – was, when – when it was Bailey that had the briefcase, I was like, yeah, I'd like to see it pretty much right away because the briefcase works best at the end of the day with heels, you know, because there's more opportunity for them. You don't want to see a baby face kind of like, you know, be cowardice and be like, I'm only going to call in, you know, I'm when you're hurt and down. It's, it's really an easy tool for your heel to use, kind of a flat tool for a baby face. But if a baby face cashes in on the same night like Dean Ambrose did, um, you're going to get a huge reaction, um, especially. Um, and given like the heelish, you know, you can get away with the heelish manner, although this was done perfectly because it was just um, Charlotte getting her comeuppance. It wasn't like Charlotte had an epic five-star match. No, she just got done freaking ganging up in, on Becky Lynch. So it worked perfect. Bailey got the – she cashed it in after kind of teasing us for a minute if she was or if she wasn't, almost like she was contemplating it. But it was – it was great, man. I, I popped hard. Popped huge, excuse me. And uh, Charlotte's ninth reign was over before it began. Yeah, um, which works out. You got Bailey as your new champ, which everybody's happy about. You got a cash in that caught a pop. That, that increased Lynch. ratings. And Charlotte got her ninth reign. Because we know they're yeah. trying to push Charlotte and get them numbers they, up. They're just honestly, like that. I think, yeah, I think they want her to have a similar number number of reigns to a Ric Flair when it's all said and done. Right, right. And to, and to do that, you can't give all of them, like, a lengthy run. Right. Some of them have to be, two you seconds. know, two-second reigns, <laughs> you know, um, which she had plenty of, uh, had you watched two years ago when Charlotte was having her feud with, um, Be- uh, not Becky Lynch, uh, Sasha Banks. They were trading that belt back every two weeks to two months. That belt went back and forth between the two of them so often. Uh but anyways, yeah, at the end of it, uh, Becky Lynch is one belt down and uh, Bailey is one belt up, you know, so no complaints there. And then we go from that, we get a nice little backstage segment, Roman Reigns walking through the, the hall, he gets jumped by Elias, gets a uh, guitar, his acoustic guitar broken over his back. Elias goes out to the ring, starts jamming on the electric guitar, which got a pop from me. Like seeing him on different instruments now. Valid, um, valid. Yeah, yeah. He he gives us the same same kind of song, just insulting the local sports team and local crowd, you know. And on his way out, eats a Superman punch from Roman Reigns, who's had plenty of time to get better. Uh, Roman throws him in the ring, gives him a spear. One, two, three. That match was that match was shorter than than Charlotte's reign is really what it was. Which is funny, actually thinking about it. They had two matches start and end within like a minute, back to back. I'm, uh, so I'm not even gonna lie, guys. That match was so fast, I don't even have notes on it. <laughs> I'm sitting no, here like, wait, you did blink, I lose the blink card? And you miss it. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> blink and you miss it. Yeah, because it looked like a segment. It looked like a segment, you know. It, and and that's really what it was. Elias was singing. Nothing was happening. It looked like the match was off. He's walking up the ramp to excuse himself. He catches a Superman punch. Literally is thrown in the ring. The ref rings the bell. He eats a spear just like that, and it's over. The, the match was probably 13 seconds, it feels like. Um, maybe not even that, to be fair. But uh, that led us into the first of the two championships, which I'm going to say this. Because of the cash-in by Brock Lesnar, the uh, Universal Championship match with Seth Rollins and AJ Styles, hands down, match of the night. It was amazing. I mean, God, dude, it was so good. It was amazing. <clears throat> yeah, man. Like, I personally, I said it on our last episode, I don't care for AJ and I don't care for Seth. I don't not like them. I respect them. I respect everything they do. But neither of them do it for me. 
and I haven't been around, so this dream match for me wasn't really a dream match. So I kind of right. stirred off into Twitter, and I was doing my tweets and whatever. But once it started getting towards the end of the match, that, yes, I agree. Just the, the ending alone was match of the night. Like, dude, it was, he countered it, a stomp into a Styles Clash. Yes. Like, come <laughs> on, dude. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> hell was that? Yes. God dang, Yes, dude. it was absolutely amazing. And I do have it in my notes that, again, I did. this wasn't a dream match to me. But at the end, they, they put it in my face. Like, oh, you know, we want to say it's not a dream match, huh? That they made they it. won you over there. <laughs> oh, they won you God. over with the match. <laughs> oh, yeah. it was so good. It yeah, so I mean, good. it was it was it, the whole match was in a higher gear than you see normal WWE matches run. It, it ran at a faster pace. The the uh, you had Seth flying all over the place, doing suicide dives multiple times back to back. I mean, AJ doing his flippy shit. It was <laughs> it was awesome. There was so many counters, some really good false finishes. Um, at the end, though. Uh, AJ did get caught with the stomp, um, and Seth retains. I think they did the right thing here, but honestly, there was no real wrong winner in this. Right. Like, you could just complain less about Seth winning, but either man, looking at him with the belt is, is like, no pun intended, but phenomenal. Like, they they really are. Valid. Um, but uh, after that, you know, we can't go championship match into championship. So we get a... The, uh, we get a surprise from the Lucha House Party. And I love that you messaged me. You were like, was this on the card? <laughs> I was like, no, bro. I have no idea what they're doing. I I'm like, did I miss something here? I wasn't ready for this. No. The second, the, second, the second Lars came out, I was like, this doesn't be on predictions. We know <laughs> Lars is about to kill these three guys. I don't understand why they got Lars beating them up, though. Yes, you're a beast. Uh, yes, you can beat anybody gotta, up. Just you're, gotta remind us. You're beating up these Lucha so, Libre yeah. guys that, like, I could beat up. Like, come on, man. Like, do something good. Uh, <laughs> like, bring Paul White out. And bring beat him Paul up. White. Beat him yeah, up. Have the big show, man. <laughs> Let me see you beat him up like you do these little yeah. itty-bitty Lucha well, like, Libre. Or like bust out something because he's got what he's got the the what is it the freak show his his like his finishing like side slam and then he's got his his uh sit down power bomb but let's see Lars like bust out um like a drop kick or something you know drop right. out something that's gonna like throw us off like we get it dude you're just a steamroller okay yes. and you just like to run over little guys yes but I... people people you... will pop for like just just one little odd thing that you don't you wouldn't expect from a big guy right you know and that's the cool thing about big men you know is if they can surprise you because big men seem like the least like people likely people to surprise you in the match unlike these small guys who like you mean you got seth rollins can deadlift john cena so like impressive feats of strength can be done just by anybody nowadays but watching a big dude drop like you know a drop kick, that <laughs> that jungle gets you going, bro. Do something other than run in the ring, clothesline, power bomb. Yeah, <laughs> or or like what I've been seeing in Twitter. If you guys haven't followed him, follow Brian the Guppy, dude. He posts some of the craziest and funnest clips um, of wrestling between like like uh, crazy WTF spots where you guys got guys falling off the of scaffolds, but then the other little gems. Like I've been like, and he's been posting. Um, Big Show and oh god, who was it? It was the Big Show. And he was oh in Kane, uh, like chain wrestling, and uh, it's it's a freaking it's a gem to watch. Like two big guys do like traditional wrestling instead of just like slamming into each other. <laughs> so it, it's it's really fun, man. That's 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 kind of what I'm getting at. The real the real takeaway here that y'all need to know is Lars beat the hell out of some minorities, got his head busted open. And y'all need to follow Brian the Guppy on Twitter, okay? Those two things, you're going to have a fun time. Now, I do um, want to throw it out there. That's the second bleed of the night. Was that on purpose? The second what? The second bleed of the night. You had Samoa Joe bleeding. Oh, yeah. And then you had yeah. Lars bleeding. You got now, busted open. He word, had stitches, I think. Word is that AEW is going to be TV 14. Is WWE oh, the, the, sneaking the, towards the PG fourteen or yes. whatever? The, yes. Yeah. Meaning you can have blood and be okay with it. I think I think nowadays blood's overrated. However, when done correctly, it can add to the drama. But I I'm as much as I like the attitude era, I don't like if people bleed for the sake of bleeding. You know, I mean, because 
Did you ever see um it maybe it was right after when you stopped watching? Um, but there were two times and both of them were, were matches with JBL, although it's not his fault, just a coincidence. Um John Cena bled in in a, I think it was a last man standing match with them. And and it's like the bloodiest I've ever seen anybody. And with them carrying on the match. Um, because right. also JBL had a famous incident with Eddie Guerrero where he hit him with a chair. And and, and this was due to Eddie blading himself, but Eddie bladed an artery in his head. Ooh. Yeah. Damn. And instantly like a horror show. It wouldn't stop. It was spraying out his head. I mean, it is <laughs> I think it was the uh it it led immediately into the PG era. If I remember correctly, I believe it was only like... So Eddie not Guerrero even, caused the PG era. Like, <laughs> killed the, the, the mature rating. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it was... I want to say it was same week. Like, the same week, even. If not, it was really close. Um, after the incident with Eddie, um, who I think fainted from the blood loss, by the way. Um, the WWE went PG, and... Or at least at the very least, they banned blading after that point because it it can. It's not good, man. I don't know, no. man. I get older. <laughs> I get older, and I see people. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, I used it's not to like when I was, was young cool. and bloodthirsty. Yeah. Um, what match was it? it? Was Stone Cold Bret Hart? That Stone Cold. See, that like was when bleeding bloody. is done right. Yeah, that's I, when it's I thought done that right. was a little much. That's what killed it for me. I'm like, man, for real. Like, but Stone at, Cold passed out while he was bleeding, and he at, became like the biggest thing ever. At the same time, I didn't like that match. No, I, I didn't care for that match. Bret Hart and Stone Cold wasn't really chemistry, in my opinion. But I think that's because Bret Hart wasn't Attitude Era. Bret Hart wasn't all in on the Attitude Era, and he yeah. made that well known. That's why I went to WCW. Well, I mean, other reasons, but. He, you know, you know. He made my it well is, known. He wasn't part of the attitude era. That wasn't for him. Wrestling changed, and he didn't like it. So I didn't care for that match. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, I see. I watched. I watched the Bret Hart matches, and I hate to say it. I don't know if it's. I think he's overrated. I think if I want to get attention, I would say that. But I really just think that he doesn't fit my style. I'm. Not old, but I'm still fairly young, and I think he was just before my time. Like. I think my I may have said this in a previous show I can't remember but I think like my Bret Hart unfortunately nowadays it's terrible because of the, how it panned out but was a uh, Chris Benoit Benoit just had like an intensity and and like a more legit wrestler feel to him and it really resonated with me and it's it's unfortunate how everything turned out but apparently that was um that was kind of the appeal, I guess, to Bret Hart. And if I'm missing it, anybody listening, I know Bret Hart's got, like, some of the biggest following. If I'm missing the point, man, please hit me up on Twitter, comment on the video why I need to love Bret Hart. But... He was he was more chill, and he, yeah. and he had the chemistry. Like, he made matches amazing without the pop, if that makes sense. Like Without, he, like, the cartoonish stuff, you yeah, know, that was, exactly. that was popular he, at the time. He made wrestling good because wrestling was good. You didn't need the yeah. gimmicks. You didn't need the Godfather's hose in the outside of the ring. You had an excellent <laughs> match because Bret Hart was part of that match. It they, was. I know he was, like, the technician and the whole bestie, you know, like, the, the, the catchphrase. Yes, he had chemistry with everybody. And maybe the whole Stone Cold thing was because Bret Hart, like I said, was an Attitude Era. I don't know. But the most recent addition on the WWE Network, I don't know, the, maybe it was the most recent last week or whatever, was his match with the guy that I don't even remember the guy's name. The, the most <laughs> overrated losses or whatever the hell it was. And this guy beat Brett, and Vince was all on this guy's nuts. And then Vince put this guy in a match with somebody else, and then Vince was like, oh, I made a mistake. It wasn't this guy being good. It was this guy facing Brett It's because Brett, Brett, Brett made him look good. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so man. Brett had that chemistry. He was there. And like, and the reason I see it is because my favorite growing up was Shawn Michaels. And we all know how many times Shawn Michaels fought Brett Hart. <laughs> it's, count your, uh, count your <laughs> traditional at least one Shawn Michaels. <laughs> episode right so i mean <laughs> that's why i see it it's there but what brought us to this off-topic conversation with stone cold versus bright heart that match i did not see it that's yeah. just me and therefore the bleed was too much and i don't know it's well yeah like i said let's not get too sidetracked but once again um you guys go ahead leave it in the comments 
Convince me, convince Kyle why Bret Hart is the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. I am open for all of your advice. And okay? the best to getting kicked in a chin, just throwing that out there. Jesus, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, one more, uh, two more matches to get. Uh, Kofi Kingston faced off against Kevin Owens, which once again was a great match. Um, the thing that stuck out to me, and maybe you saw it, and you can lighten me up on it too. Um, why was Kofi taken out of his shoes? Like, like I saw Kevin Owens remove one shoe, um, but like, why the hell were the shoes taken off? <laughs> like, I'm I'm seriously asking. I tried to, I really racked my brain on. It. I was like, it did made absolutely no sense. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is somehow, maybe inadvertently, Kofi lost a shoe, and Kevin Owens, being the professional, you know, decided to rip the other one off so Kofi wouldn't look stupid having to do it himself. You know, but I, I, I don't know, man. Um, Kofi hit the Trouble in Paradise though uh, to retain his belt after an awesome back and forth, just standard match. Loved it from everybody. <laughs> Kofi retained his championship, I do, man. I do have it, it in my time. notes, though. Why didn't yeah. Kevin Owens give them shoes to Alexa Bliss? <laughs> Why didn't he give them to Alexa Bliss? <laughs> I mean, she's having shoe problems, right? I mean, left at the oh, airport. Oh, Jesus. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> this, the match that got the most attention uh, of the guy, night. I'm a funny guy, guys. I'm a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not funny, but you got to keep trying. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's my humor. I'm a dad now. I like the stupid jokes. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the uh, the match that got everyone's ire of the night and pretty much overshadowed the thing, unfortunately, because it was such an insane match. And like I said, if it wasn't for the finish, this would have been my match of the night. You had the men's money in the bank match between Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Randy Orton, Andrade, and Ali. And then you had the vacant slot because um, Sami Zayn uh, was taken out, so he didn't come out for the match. And you're kind of left wondering, like, oh, are we just going forward with the match? Or is somebody going to interfere in somebody being Bray Wyatt? Please be Bray Wyatt. Yes. It needs to be Bray Wyatt. Valid. Why was it not Bray Wyatt? Okay, They're, they're saving it. <laughs> I'm just that, that's the only thing I can say. Saving it, man. Bray Wyatt's gonna come out and beat up like Heath Slater, and we're all gonna be sad. What if Bray Wyatt? But... What if Bray Wyatt and Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar have the first ever Money in the Bank, Money in the Bank match. That your briefcase is on the line. I beat you. I get it. I don't, that, that would be cool. I would be cool. But... I mean, they, they, there's no way though. You know, I hate to I hate to be the guy that acts like he knows. What, what backstage is doing, but you have to feel like there's no way that they would ever let Brock lose to Bray Wyatt. Like, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's like he's only allowed to lose to Seth Rollins or Roman. So that's pretty much it. Like, anybody outside of those two, they're not allowed to, to beat Brock Lesnar. But, um, match was insane. Holy shit, how was Finn Balor not in the hospital? That dude had his back worked over time and time again. I think a couple of the spots I saw was he was suplexed onto a ladder. He was... I, I don't remember who did it. Like, I fell asleep for this match. Drew, I'm going to drop the oh spoiler now. Oh, my God. Don't I didn't that. see Brock oh, Lesnar no, come don't tell them that. I'm an old guy, guys. I, my alarm goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning. I fell asleep. Jesus. I do remember Andrade doing a sunset flip powerbomb on Finn Balor onto the, the ladder. Oh, my God. Yes. Balor that bounced was, about four feet one. in the air. But guys, that's all I remember from this match. I fell he asleep. Landed, he, he landed on that ladder twice. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did. He did. Oh but God. then I fell asleep. Like I've watched highlights and I seen like the choke slam by Corbin on the outside. And but I did not see this happen, guys. I woke up in the morning and got the news on Twitter. So, so I'll fill you in. Um, essentially, uh, Drew McIntyre just beat the piss out of out of uh, out of um, Finn Balor. For the most of it, if I recall correctly, Drew McIntyre was involved in most of the spots. He at one point, Finn Balor was suplexed onto the ladder, laying down. Then had uh, I forget who, probably Ali, uh, was Alabama slammed face first onto Finn while he was on the ladder. At another point, Finn Balor, I believe, was choke slammed onto the spine of a ladder, and then the creme de la creme was yeah, the sunset flip 
by Andrade off, off the ladder onto another ladder that was propped up on the ladder and on the middle rope, kind of like a table. And Finn bounced on it. And, and the I ladder was just, didn't give, man. If the ladder would have no, gave, it would have been so bad. But oh, the ladder I didn't sit there, give. I was like, dude, why? What did Finn do? <laughs> just like, <laughs> like you got to spread these spots out, man. Not like use them all up on it. Because other than that, there was only one with Ricochet going over to the outside and going through a ladder like a chair, like a table there. Like that was that was the only other like notable ladder spot where like someone landed on the ladder that I remember. I was like, dude, why, why are y'all trying to kill Finn, man? Like, <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> but um, towards the end, uh, you had Ali looking like he was gonna win, and then we got what we got. We got uh, Brock's so, music. So go I, ahead. I haven't e- like I didn't even watch it. Like I didn't want to because at first I was mad about it. Now I'm I'm, I'm on board, guys. Just so you know, I'm yeah. on board with Brock Lesnar having the briefcase, and a lot yeah, we'll, of, a lot we'll of it has to do it. with the Brock boombox. But the Brock boombox is, is that doing how that. it happened? Like Ali was on a ladder and Brock came out and fingertips, tipped the ladder yeah, and then took yeah, it. Fingertips, man. Exactly. Uh, it's wow. funny too. There's another gif on Twitter if you see it. Um, Brock was so careless when he was running down. He knocked. He he shoved a ladder out of his way and legitimately hit the cameraman with it. The cameraman was not ready. He got blasted with a ladder, dude, with Brock running by. It was like a semi-truck hitting like a Pinto, okay? That, that thing just flew off to the side and, and just careened the cameraman. Wow. But, yeah, so um, Brock came out. Uh, I believe he shoved Ali off the ladder. He looked shaky getting up there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he looked kind of shaky. He did not look comfortable <laughs> on the top of that ladder. He was very top-heavy of but um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, Brock wins, pulls down the briefcase. Brock is your 2019 Males Money in the Bank winner. And when I saw it, I was just like, huh. <laughs> just like I was like, damn it, WWE, you did it again. <laughs> like, just when I let my guard down, and I'm like, you're going to right the ship. You <laughs> did this, and you're going to send everybody home pissing, fucking, and moaning on Twitter. But like you said, like you said, time of reflection I think they undid a lot of the damage now granted I'm not going to sit here and say that Brock winning the money in the bank was the best decision like no that that should have been Andrade um, Drew McIntyre hell even even Ali would have been really good because you can build those guys up you can Fair. make them into stars you know but I don't think Brock is the worst thing either Dude. that would be you know Randy Orton or Baron Corbin, you know, would have been like the worst thing. So it's somewhere in the middle. He's providing us with plenty of memes. <laughs> valid, valid. So it, it, it is what it is. And folks, that was Money in the Bank. Um, we'll go ahead. We're going to get to some questions. I don't think we have too many. Um, we just you got, say you got we just got, well, I don't know how many you have on your end. I have one for us. And we'll do we'll do two is... questions. We'll do two questions. Oh come on, I had it on my screen. Okay. <clears throat> the Brocast Podcast, which actually just followed us like ten minutes before we started recording and got this question in. Whose WWE championship reign are you enjoying the most so far? What champion right now are you enjoying the most? Am I most excited for or disappointed? I, I forgot. Like at, at f- who the best bleh. Let's see. I, I had a way to word this better. Um, what champion reign are you enjoying the most? Like the most oh, so enjoyable who, title hold right now. So currently, yeah, it, excluding the belt that debuts on Raw, and we'll save it for that. Um, because, oh, by the way, during the show, we saw an advertisement. Mick Foley on the following Raw is going to debut a new championship. <laughs> so besides that one, which we'll cover on Raw, um the the title that I'm probably enjoying the most coming out of Money in the Bank, uh, to, well, let's see, Finn ain't doing really much with the Intercontinental title. The U.S. belt just fell in Ray's hands. Bailey just got the women's. Uh, we're not really seeing anything in the female tag team championship. So I okay, so it would either be I would have to say either Becky Lynch or uh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan's tag titles. But because they, they just got theirs, I'm going to say Becky Lynch is raw belt. She seems to be the biggest star right now, the most the biggest star appeal out of all the current champions. 
And um, I'm still digging it. I'm still digging Becky as, as champion. So I'll say hers. I'll say. I, I would have to say Becky the same. Becky. I mean, I mean, earlier I was talking about how, like, you know, I, I was kind of sad that Lacey didn't take hers. You know, whatever. But the, the rain is amazing. She has ratings. She's hot. She has amazing promos. She's just, she's the man. And um, when I got back into wrestling, I will throw it out there that I keep saying that I got back in January. I texted my buddy and I said, look, I'm going to a live event in March and I need a shirt to wear. What shirt do I wear? And he said, well, who do you like the most right now? And I, I went online, I ordered a the man shirt. So that is definitely my answer. I hope she keeps that belt for a while. I'm sad Lacey didn't yeah. take it. Oh, absolutely. But Becky is the answer. I mean, she is an amazing champion. She holds herself very well. And, I mean, that's all there is to it. If you're not watching, right. then, I mean, you don't see that Becky is amazing. But if you are watching, you know she's amazing. Even if you're a Charlotte Fair, Charlotte Flair fan, you have to know Becky is amazing at holding the title. So there that is go. my answer, Becky Lynch. That's fair. Yeah, it, it's fair. It makes sense, too. I mean, you could go with, like, say, Seth Rollins, um, Kofi because of the momentum he's got, you know. But yeah, I think I think Becky just easily has the biggest star appeal right now. Valid, valid. Um, Seth Rollins, I've said it a couple of times. I mean, I'm he's amazing. Don't get me wrong, but he just doesn't do it for me. And, so here, I got I got a good one for you too. I I, I got um uh Kurt from uh, Facebook asking us uh what are our takes? And this, and like I said, this is more for you. You know why? Here in a second. Just comparing Attitude Era versus today's product. Um, like, just general appeal and general thoughts Woo. on it. And, and I, I'll, I'll do mine because I'm more excited for yours, so I'm going to let you go ahead and you'll wrap the show up with your answer. But um, me that's me watching one. the product. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Me, me watching the product for the majority of the time, I'll say this. I'll, I'll simplify it. Um, I think the Attitude Era was bigger on personality um, and edgy. Um, and less on the in-ring product, and then you you flip that for today. It feels like today is kind of the opposite. We don't have as edgy of angles due to like you know say the ratings, and then also just whatever reason or not the ratings, but the PG rating, and then whatever else you want to blame it on for the edgy stuff. Um, and then the personalities don't seem like they're allowed to shine as much. I don't blame the performers. I blame kind of just the the material that they're handed um but the in-ring performance in wwe today is there's there's no comparison it's the best that there's ever been in the company you know it, it really is as far as athleticism um just the the things that these guys can do nowadays we just never seen until then so that's that's kind of me uh Less personality and, and edgy content today, but a better in-ring performance than what we had in the Attitude. Mm, how can I answer this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying. I want to be clever about it. Like, if you don't follow me on Twitter, in my profile it says "Long Live the Attitude Era." If I could go back to the Attitude Era compared to what we have nowadays, I would do it in a heartbeat, no thought, snap my fingers, bam. We go back in the day. Just just rewatch what we're watching or apply the tone to the current landscape. The tone to the current landscape, what the Attitude Era was, everything about it. Um I could do without the sexist stuff. I'm, I'll be that. Everything. I'll be that guy. Everything, <sighs> even May Young giving birth to a disgusting handful Jesus of petroleum Christ. jelly. Well, if we're the, applying it to today's landscape, who's May Young? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even answer that. I don't know what I don't know what that answer would be. I'm scared <laughs> to answer it. Like I got an answer in my head, but I know. <laughs> like okay. Okay. Let, okay. Let me give the. Okay. Let me give. If you the, you said me, apply today's landscape, so let's hear it. Who's um, May Young? This. Who's uh, May Young? Okay. I may have. Mm. <laughs> you caught me off guard with this one, but it's such an excellent question. Um. Yeah. No, it's good. Okay. It's good. Basically, what I meant to say was, I would take back then and relive it. Like I wouldn't apply it to today. Like I couldn't tell you who's who, and but right. I would relive it. I would rather have the attitude era than what I have today. Now, part of that could be because I that was my teenage years. It's the nostalgia. And man. I had it's friends that we backyard youth. wrestled with, and um, right. Okay. To answer the question. 
back then, <laughs> you, you, I mean, you answered it best. Back then, they were worried more about um, the storylines and having Edge and or having the Dudley Boys steal Edge and Christian's ass cream because they took their clothes from the shower, and Mae Young having hands as children because she had sex with Mark Henry, <laughs> and um, back then they could pull it off. They like, chop Val Venus's penis off. Yes, and it's absolutely <laughs> amazing. Like, oh my god! <laughs> like they came up with some, like, oh, like I, Vince Russo is the man. Like I love Vince Russo. Oh, Everybody god, hates dude. Vince Russo. I love Vince Russo. He did my teenage years. <laughs> you can't pull it off nowadays because of social dude. media. Dude, dude, with the SJW movement, and now I'm not gonna back. Hold on, but let me clarify this before it sounds like I'm making fun of. People, I, I for one, uh, am all for treating men and women equally, not degrading either person due to their sex, uh, their their um, race, or their sexual orientation. I don't think that you should become a comedic or degraded act based on those things alone. I think they're very lowbrow. I think there's a time and place for them, and nowadays there's less of a time for them. But yeah, SJWs, if if the attitude shit was going on nowadays dude every day on twitter would look like a fucking forest fire (laughs) that's exactly oh my god that's exactly what i was about to get to like (laughs) you can't do it nowadays like the the oozy i mean i talked about this in one of our other episodes the oozy hot cream segment i thought it was absolutely amazing but now Everybody now, I'm not criticizing anybody out there. Nobody think I'm criticizing anybody. You, everybody feels the way they feel for a reason, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think everything's good in moderation. But you at, know, I'm not so mad that this week they didn't do it. You know, like I, I, I'm not as mad at it because we got some good matches since then. So valid, valid. Yeah. But at yeah. the time, everybody's like, the time, they're wasting oh. time on these guys putting ass cream in the revivals draws and the revivals <laughs> scooting their asses across yeah. the ring like dogs i thought it was absolutely amazing you being the attitude era guy that was right i was laughing so hard sitting on my couch now yes they they have their talent and they could they should be in an amazing match together the usos are giving put ass cream in these guys' gym bag but i looked at it as it's comedy so they're not having a good match I'm going to look at the bright yeah. side, and he put ass cream, and now he's got an itchy asshole, and he's, he's scooting it across the ring. Jesus That's Christ. comedy gold to me. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. And I have a nine-year-old daughter that every time she sees the revival, she's like, you remember when the Usos put that cream? And, and I was like, yes, I remember, and that's amazing. Um, I steered away from the question, but nowadays you no, you, can't, no, good. you can't pull the Attitude Era because of social media. Everybody judges it's, it's everything. A shame, it's a changing and, climate, man. you got to and everybody, climbing. everybody sees everything backstage, and everybody views everything as the talent they are, and not what they're doing. They view it as what they should be. But, but there's not it, only that. But there's one other, I think, factor. I don't mean to cut you off, I, but there's another factor I think at play that kind of goes under the radar, and that's because you know people will look at stuff that occurred at generations before them, and I think there's a stigma to a lot of young people that it's hard to appreciate it because you associate it with say your older brother or your dad you know and just on that alone you're going to be turned off to it because you want something to represent your generation you know what I mean so I think that's what also makes it easier besides the lowbrow stuff that's easy to exploit but other people that also try to rip on Attitude Era uh, fans and stuff which honestly still make up i want to say at least half if not the majority of wrestling fans are still to some degree miss the attitude era to some degree but um but yeah like if i'm man if i'm like 15 16 and i'm a wrestling fan i'm probably gonna dog on the attitude era too because like that's what like 30 year olds and 40 year olds are saying is like the best shit you know i'm young i'm i got my own thing i I I want my own thing right yeah so i I could see that too and then you got you got cody rhodes fighting gold dust to kill the attitude era i see dude i love it we're gonna we're gonna cover that show right yes we are for sure i I spent 50 dollars on it fuck yeah i'm putting a podcast down (laughs) um but I agree with it. Like Cody Rhodes feels the attitude era was terrible for wrestling because it wasn't about the wrestling. It was about 
the storylines and and the Dudley boys stealing ass cream. I'll say it again. So I feel you 100%, but I enjoyed it. It was my teenage years. And back into the question, we didn't have social media back then. Right. So we couldn't dog on them. We couldn't say, oh, well, you, they're you they're not about crowds of people. No, you just right. talked about it with your like-minded friends and everybody Valid. says it's the we shit. Didn't, we didn't care about who the road dog and Mr. Ass Billy Gunn was behind the scenes. We didn't care yeah. who any of those fucking guys no, were. That's a good like, take, man. I went take. to, I'll never forget it. I went to Raw September 28th, 1998. My best friend's birthday. Raw was in my hometown. And he was like, yeah, my aunt bought me tickets, but she couldn't afford one for you. I'm sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. You're going to Raw, bro. Like, it's your birthday. Hell yeah. The day of the show, I got goosebumps on my arms right now. He's like, yeah, I lied to you. We got you a ticket. So we went to Raw, and Stone Cold stole the fucking Zamboni at Joe Louis Arena and drove oh, it to the yes, ring. yes, I remember that. People nowadays are like, oh, that's stupid. That's I'll never forget that to the day I die. He almost ran over Vince McMahon with this Zamboni. Like, the <laughs> ring moved six inches. And then there were freaking Detroit cops in the middle of the ring, and Stone Cold jumped off the Zamboni and started punching Vince McMahon. That shit won't fly nowadays. But back then, like, nah. oh, my God, it was golden. Well, I don't know. See, that could, that could fly that, that because could there, fly. Was, there was nothing. Too grotesque, right? 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 You know, yeah. What I don't think could fly today would be the the the, the derogatory stuff, like the pro, the bra and panty matches are the first thing that come to mind. Like oh, that man. wouldn't fly today. Not not in the women's the women's revolution and evolution stuff nowadays. No, like that. You do the. WWE would be boycotted by Jerry that stuff Lawler. Nowadays. If you ever happen to listen to this for any reason, I'm on your side. They need to come back. <laughs> But um, anyways, I'll, I'll we'll ask one more question and then we're gonna go ahead. Okay. Because we've um, been on here. For I just want to tell whoever that was. Excellent question. I don't know if I answered the question. I steered away. My mind went into. Oh, I'm, adding, I'm gonna add a second part to it, so we're not done. Okay, you, let's you, do this. You kind of opened my eyes to something because you said take, and we won't use May Young, but you said take uh, attitudes theme and apply it to nowadays. So what I'll do is I'll ask you a couple attitude era wrestlers and going by just who you've seen nowadays. Let's apply them to those current people. All right, let's see what so, you're doing. Who, uh, so who would be today's uh, Stone Cold? Today's Stone Cold? Um, Roman Reigns. And, Roman uh, Reigns. It has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with what he does in the ring. That has to do with, off the top of my head, you've seen Stone Cold at every show, and he got the pop. You've seen Stone Cold every week, no matter what was going on, no matter what happened, you've seen Stone Cold Steve Austin. Every uh, so, week you see Roman Reigns. That's true. Who's today's uh, Mick Foley? Today's Mick Foley. Mm. Mankind, whatever, whatever alliteration. Mm. I can't even give you an answer on that. It's hard because there's no real hardcore scene. Yet. Right. Like. Mm. Well, Mick Foley was like an everyday man, so, and then I put himself through a lot. I would, I would say, although we haven't seen much of him. Probably everyday man who got some deep issues. Jeez, you're right. That actually, I, I, I mean, put myself mm, in. Sorry. Off I the mean, top of my head, off the top of my head, I'm gonna say Sami Zayn or Eric. Um, who's who? Sami Zayn or who? You, wait, you cut off there. It's Eric, not... uh, Sami Zayn or Eric Young. Oh, okay. Uh, for, okay former okay. sanity leader. Uh, who's today's? Uh, we'll go to the women's side. Who's today's Trish Stratus? Today's tr- man, you're putting me on the spot on this. Um, right. Today's Trish Stratus. Do we? There's really. Mm, I can't really answer that one either. Like, you can't even really compare back then to nowadays. You know, gun gun to your head. Who's the first name? Mm, Charlotte Flair. Charlotte. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like I said, just imagine it's gun to your head. Spit out the first Valid. name. Okay. I'll right. Go, I'll get um. Okay. What about Lita? Lita, mm, damn, who the hell else do we got? Honestly, um, gun to my head, I'd get shot. I don't have an answer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I hesitated too long. It was too much. I'm going to say <laughs> Becky Lynch just because of uh, the whole dichotomy. Like, you know, they were just arch rivalries, and that's kind of like the biggest rivalry. Val- I well, could, well, I can at um, least alliterate on why I didn't have an answer. When you tell me Lita, like, um, it might be um, – oh, actually, somebody on Twitter told us to do top 10 divas. 
top 10 women in wrestling history. I meant to tell you that because our last okay. episode, we were like top 10. Uh, it's going to be spoiled. My number one would be Lita. And I say that because Lita was a hardy boy. Lita did the ladders. Lita did the high flying. And the reason I didn't have an answer for you just now is because you don't have women that do that it's hard. nowadays. Yeah, no. You don't, you don't, it, it is, you don't have that. Well, nothing, you, nothing against well, the women's division. No, if you're division. thinking about the, the, the aerial hurricanrana that Lita did, um, what's her name? Uh, Selena Vega. She does that. She does. She'll go off the apron um, and do her Karanas to people on the outside, like Lita used to. Valid. Uh, she, yeah, yeah. And I think I've seen her do it off the top rope once too. She does it mainly to men, just like Lita. So actually, Selena <laughs> Vega probably. All right, um, I'll take that answer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, anyways, that's gonna be it. If you had some more wrestlers, low or hit us up on Twitter. Let us hear what your thoughts were on it. Let us also know your thoughts on the show. What'd you think of it? Did Brock Lesnar ruin it for you guys? Or were you able to still appreciate the the show as a whole? Um, once again, my name was Kyle. Rob, you have anything you want to leave the people with? Mm, I missed the Attitude Era. I'm sorry yeah. if, like... I'm Too much here, reminiscing. I'm, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> uh, again, I'm sorry if I didn't answer that answer. I'm honestly not sure if I did because I steered aside so much. It's all good. Man. But it's I do want to throw it out there that I am all about the Attitude Era, but I am also about Cody Rhodes trying to end the Attitude Era. I see both sides. But I do miss the Attitude Era. That was an excellent question. Whoever asked that, I am glad you asked that question. I enjoyed All right. spitting off the top awesome, of my head man. talking about it. <laughs> thanks thanks for the question, you guys. Y'all have a wonderful time. Make sure to check us out on our next episode where we cover the raw results. Everyone have a good one.